Hi everyone! In my previous video I repaired this Pioneer Elite receiver and now we are looking at the bottom part of it which is a 10 channel class D amplifier and a switch mode power supply for it and in the process we looked at this module and we saw that these big capacitors uh, seem to be a bit bulged we measured these in the power supply and they didn't look too bad at least they didn't fail yet but I believe they are a bit degraded and I think it's better to replace them anyway even if I'm wrong about this considering the value of this unit this receiver still might be worth more than uh, let's say a thousand dollars and these caps should not be more than ten dollars a piece so let's go let's start with these high voltage caps on the primary side of the power supply these are Nippon Chemicon SMQ series, 85 degrees C rated, 200 volts, 1800 microfarads. And let's grab my caliper, 30 millimeters in diameter, about 47 millimeters high, and let's see what's the lead spacing looks like 10 millimeters here they are on DJ key United Chemicon SMQ series 1800 microfarads 200 volts 2000 hours at 85 degrees C which does not look extraordinary but we will see if we can find anything better than this ripple current at low frequency is 432 amps at high frequency 648 amps 10 millimeters lead spacing 30 millimeters diameter 45 millimeters high 66 of them in stock six dollars 78 cents a piece now let's see what else we can find this is a parametric search on digikey all electrolytic capacitors let's start here by clicking in stock let's select capacitance 1800 and up to let's say 2200 voltage 200 volts and let's say up to 250 55 results left let's apply that and select physical dimensions 10 millimeters lead spacing 30 millimeters diameter the capacitors are touching each other already so we cannot uh, use uh, bigger ones but height can be let's say up to 50 millimeters only three results left we have seen this one already these two are also united chemicon this one is kmq series this one is also SMQ series, but 2200 microfarads. This one is 50 millimeters high, with high ripple current. And this has lower ripple current. We don't want that. So this 2200 microfarads is a bit better, probably, but uh, not significantly, and a bit more expensive so perhaps better to stick with the original one and I've done the same on Mouser here we have a few results left let's look at them briefly this one is uh, TDK 2200 microfarads eleven dollars a piece um, also 85 degrees C rated also 2000 hours and about the same ripple current so not significantly better but much more expensive this one is also United Chemicon 1800 microfarads 105 degrees C rated 2000 hours or oh, that is the KMQ series we've seen on DigiKey with uh, lower ripple current we don't want that let's see this rubicon does not have ripple current specified usc series 3000 hours also 85 degrees c 
$6.90 piece and only one in stock. Not interesting, only one of these as well, Nichicon. These are available, United Chemicon, 2200 microfarads. Is it the same one we've seen before? No, this is a different series KMR with lower ripple current. And this one is also lower, not interesting. So, nothing better than we found on DigiKey. Now, let's look at these two on the secondary side. These are Rubicons, USC series, 80 volts, 6800 microfarads, and the same dimensions. Here they are on DigiKey. Rubicon USC series, 6800 microfarads, 80 volts, 3000 hours at 85 degrees C, and so on. The right dimensions, 96 pieces in stock for about $6 a piece. And again, I couldn't find anything better than this. Now let's look at these capacitors in the power amplifier. These are Nippon Chemicon KMH series, 105 degrees C, 80 volts, 3900 microfarads, and the same dimensions. Here they are on DigiKey, but not quite available. It says available to order here with some request, and that probably means some long time, so we don't really want that. Let's just look at some parameters so we can find the replacement. 2000 hours at 105 degrees C, 3 amps uh, ripple current at low frequency, and 3.6 amps at high frequency. And here they are on Mouser, non-stocked, minimum order 400 pieces for $3.27 a piece. And here is the best replacement I could find. I found a few on DigiKey, but all of them are 85 degrees C rated, and this is the only 105 degrees C rated I could find. Rubicon MXG series, 3000 hours, and 100 volts rated. And more expensive, about $10 a piece, and only 15 in stock. The ripple current was not specified on Mouser, so I'm checking this datasheet. We should find it here in these tables. First we find the right voltage, which is 100 volts. Then uh, capacitance here, 3900. And here it is, 3.67 amps at 120 Hz, which is better than the original. And for high frequency there is a multiplier here. 400 volts and 10 kilohertz, the multiplier is 115. The first order from DigiKey has arrived. Four Nippon Chemicons, two Rubicons, exactly the same models as the original ones. And sure enough, the new ones have completely flat tops. I managed to desolder these two Rubicon caps. It was a bit tricky, because of this silicone in particular. I tried to carefully cut it between the parts. And also massive copper tracks here on the board. Hard to get enough heat into them. I'm using my Pasty D100A with a large tip. Let me show you the bulging tops. They are easy to feel, but maybe not so easy to see on camera. So, look at this. And the new ones are completely flat. Now, let's measure them. We see, let's say, about 5300 microfarads and about 30 milliohms ESR. And that's about the same I measured in circuit in my previous video. And this is at 100 Hz. And let's take a look at the dissipation factor. About 0 
and the second one measures about the same. Yes, and now this new capacitor, let's call this 5800 microfarads, about 22 milliohms ESR, and dissipation is uh, 0 0.08. And the second one, about the same. Yes. So, these don't look too bad, but bulges on them mean that they experienced high internal pressure at some point, so they must have overheated at least once. And in case you are wondering why we measured about 5800, these should be 6800. First of all, we measured at 100 Hz, and at higher frequency they would look even lower. So let's measure at DC. about 607 millifarads and this one about 606 and let's grab a calculator uh, 606 let's say divided by 6.8 and minus 1 so this is about 10% down, which is completely fine. They should be within plus minus 20% according to the specs. So these are gone as well. Let's have a look. About 1500 microfarads, 52 milliohms ESR. About the same, about the same, and about the same as well. Let's take a look at the dissipation, 0 0.05 let's say, and now a new one. And dissipation is 0 0.04, slightly better, slightly higher capacitance. What about ESR? About 40 milliohms. So again, these don't look too bad, but they are bulging. Look at this. And the new one, of course, does not move at all. Well, if I push on it. And here we have 8 capacitors for the power amplifier from Mauser. And here is the power amp board, and I already removed these bulged capacitors. Check out this massive heatsink on the bottom of the unit. We can see it here. And we can see these five pads sitting between the heat sink and the board right here. And on this side we have uh, power MOSFETs soldered to the board. So the heat should go through the board and uh, through this solder mask, through the pads and to the heat sink. Which does not seem to be terribly efficient, but supposedly should be enough. And there are two fans here. They blow the air that way, there are arrows on them. So this one blows the air through the power supply. There is this partition and this uh, fan blows the air through the power amplifier. So the air is supposed to enter uh, on this side and exit on that side. And I wonder how did this thing overheat? Perhaps it was sitting in a cabinet where the side vents were blocked. And now let's measure the capacitors. I already measured them and they look very close to each other and these as well. So let's grab one of each and have a look. Let's say 3000 microfarads and 29 milliohms ESR. 
and this is at 100 Hz and this one about 3300 and uh, 23 milliohms ESR and now a dissipation factor 0 0.05 and this one 0 0.055 so they don't look too bad these do look better but not drastically so both boards are done and you might be wondering if this thing overheated what about the rest of the capacitors shouldn't we replace all of them well they look fine and they measure fine so i am inclined to leave them alone I find it really hard to justify a lot of money and a lot of work to replace parts that look fine. And I'm sure many people will disagree with me, and I'm sure that a lot of people will agree with me as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So I'm testing this thing, and the heatsink on the bottom is getting quite warm. The receiver is sitting like this, turned on and idling for about an hour. I did not even connect any speakers. And the MOSFETs in class D amplifiers are switching all the time. So you would expect them to get warm. And we have 10 channels here. But anyway, I did not expect it to get this warm. Check it out. About 50 degrees C. And the ambient is uh, about 23. And the fans are not running yet. A few hours later, I put this thing down and connected a couple of speakers and played some music for a while. And now I see the fans are turning on and off periodically. Oh, here they are, just started. And let's measure the temperature. About 57 degrees C. The receiver is back together and I don't have any screws left. I would call it a success. Thanks for watching. Bye.